I know. Hey, welcome back, Mobility Watt. I am super stoked to introduce Jill Miller to the, the Leopard fans out there. We've talked about Yoga Tune-Up and some of her balls that she uses to unglue. The reason I'm a fan of Jill Miller is that she is the person for me who's translated yoga into what it means to be an athlete. Using yoga language, because you've only been dealing with it for like 2,000 years. Just 2,000. Like how to get the shoulder organized. About how to translate that into better positions, better mechanics, and a restorative process to get yourself unglued. Now one of the things that we talk about a lot of mobility Watt is how to create stiffness, the relationship of stiff organized trunk to create torsion and torque. But one of the things we regularly see is that athletes have terrible diaphragm control and that the, the function or the relationship of creating all that stiffness creates stiffness and disorganized trunk. And that we have athletes who are, their diaphragm is terrible, so as is locked down. If I have an abdominal surgery, I've carried a baby, I'm just like a glued down mess. Then I want to put, a, put you on to is it yoga Yeah. Okay. And you have this concept called <laughs> organized. What, what other things are called? Like but diaphragm? Like you know, you want the diaphragm to be supple. You want, the you want to be able to have the facility of your diaphragm. And you want to be able, you want to, be able to have it be in excellent positions for, for loading, which is what, you know, you do. And, and the dissociation. that I just still need to be able to breathe and independently kind of have good function. Use the power of the innermost respiratory muscles to improve their form. Now we regularly see that athletes who have huge tidal volumes but don't access their tidal volume. They can take, if you test them, they, their inspiration, expiration is huge, but they're just breathing in a little tiny space. Maybe they even had asthma as a kid, they're neck breathers, bad pelvic position, now diaphragm shuts off, now I'm back to a neck breather. It causes all kinds of problems. In fact, you see the stiffness. So on the spine here, what, where does my diaphragm attach? Lower six ribs. All around the lower six ribs. And then it also. For you out there, this is the skirt stake. We're talking about skirt stake here. That's what this is. All of these guys. And then uh, I can use this to actually I can stick this to a. Really Pam, live TV. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> but also, it has little tails that cross across the psoas and string onto the front of the lumbar spine. So there's also some shared relationship with the quadratus and the So if I have low back pain, if I have hip pain, there's often a diaphragm component. And if the diaphragm has tension in it, um, in different places along the ribs, I might also get narrowing of ribs. This is going to affect my rib joints. It's going to affect my mobility. It's going to affect my stability. It's going to affect my performance. And then also, one of the things about the, the diaphragm is it's such a link to the nervous system. So I might have trouble with recovery with coming down if I don't help my diaphragm to be able to go through stretch and strength. Okay, so so this sounds all. So we're starting that hippie, dippy, physical therapist, yoga thing. Like, it's pretty simple to work on. Now you're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put a bunch of videos here. But we start with some of the, the obvious pieces. Now our athletes work a lot with the lacrosse ball, which is ubiquitous, it's massive. I always say it's too hard, it's too soft, but it's there. And you've got a couple of the softer balls. There this is called the yoga tin of therapy ball. These are well used and loved. They're super grippy and you can see that it actually creates shear when I spin it on my skin. It grabs all the layers. It's so um, and so it can also, it's tender enough to handle bony prominences, so it's not going to get nervy or bone pinchy or So let's start. Show me that uh, piece you did where you're using both of those to try to free up some of the, the rib, some, some of this tissue, and in the situation. Show that first. Yeah. Okay. So here it is. You have to do number one for kind of talking about diaphragm and, and, and cleaning up the mechanics of the diaphragm and cleaning up your, your thoracic mechanics. Now, one of the places we see people tilt all the time is right here. And as soon as I'm overextended, this is one of the problems with head position. As soon as I'm overextended, I've loaded up those little joints, now I have poor motion. So, Jill is just taking those balls. Put them on the left side of the spine. Left side. Both of them, one above and below. One above and below. I need two of those to create that motion segment block. Exactly. And then my left hand comes across. and. Um, so same side hand as the balls comes across. On inhale, I tug my rib cage across, and the balls move the spine to the right. And on exhale, I return. So, so your balls are on this side. You reach across with the same hand, and you roll towards the side of the balls. It just looks like I'm hugging myself, but I'm not. I'm actually doing some major spinal mobilization. So we're actually restoring rotation at the same time as mobilizing this kind of depression and to catch some of the soft tissue as well. So I can go pretty much anywhere along the upper thoracic, upper and mid thoracic spine and catch segments of diaphragm and the ribs that they're connected to. Uh, you, if you want to know how long do I need to do this? A couple minutes? Each side? Ten minutes? Should I just do this alone? Do each side. Yeah, you can do it alone. There you go. So here we go. A little piece. Now look, shock of the wonder dog. Dog, did you, did you clear our hands? Good. Still going? 